On July 20, 1969, the world held its breath as Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. After setting foot on the moon's surface, Armstrong radioed to NASA the famous words, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But although he walked on the moon, Armstrong didn't like walking in general. In fact, he hated exercise. In a less famous quote, Armstrong said, I believe that every human has a finite amount of heartbeats. I don't intend to waste any of mine running around doing exercises. The quote is funny, but not very logical. In fact, the opposite is true. Research shows that the more time we spend raising our heart rates through exercise, the longer our hearts will end up beating. Did you know that every hour of aerobic exercise may add two to three hours to your lifespan? Aerobic exercise includes activities like brisk walking, jogging, hiking, biking, and swimming. It involves continuous movement of your large muscle groups and increases your heart rate and need for oxygen. In the last video, we talked about the benefits of after-meal exercise. Once you've added that into your schedule, it's also important to start an aerobic exercise plan. This more vigorous form of exercise has a host of health benefits. It lowers blood sugars, strengthens the heart, burns fat, lowers triglycerides, boosts energy, reduces disease risk, improves mood, and increases longevity. How can you benefit from aerobic exercise? First, Find an activity you enjoy, or at least that you can tolerate. I really like playing basketball with my friends and walking with my wife. But you need to choose what works best for you. Second, set aside the time. A good goal is to build up to 45 minutes of aerobic exercise at least three to five times each week. This should be in addition to your after meal exercise. But it's okay to start out small and work your way up. You can even start with just five or 10 minutes each day. It's best to do aerobic exercise before breakfast or a few hours after eating. How intense should aerobic exercise be? You want to get your heart beating and your skin sweaty, and you want to be a little bit out of breath, but don't exercise to the point of pain, exhaustion, or collapse. An easy way to exercise at the right intensity is to pay attention to your voice. You should be able to talk fairly comfortably, but you shouldn't be able to whistle or sing. I encourage you to take advantage of the many benefits of aerobic exercise. It won't take long to notice a big improvement in how you feel. Strength training is also a powerful tool to control blood sugars and improve health. This exercise strengthens the body's major muscle groups. Muscles much more metabolically active than fat. The more you use your muscles, the more glucose they will need. This naturally reduces insulin resistance and lowers blood sugars. Research shows that diabetics who participate in strength training and aerobic exercise have lower hemoglobin A1C levels than those who only do one or the other. Not only does strength training improve blood sugars and boost metabolism, it also strengthens the bones, improves posture and balance, and prevents age-related mobility problems. Once you're successfully walking after your meals and getting aerobic exercise, you may want to add strength training. A good goal is 20 minutes of strength training two or three times each week. Your muscles need time to rest, so don't do this more often than every other day. Strength training can involve weights, bands, or just exercises that use the weight of your own body. You can buy dumbbells or bands to use at home, or may want to join a gym, work with a personal trainer, or get a strength training workout video to help. The final type of exercise we'll discuss is intermittent training, or IT. I only recommend IT if you've already been doing the other three types of exercise for at least a month or two. You can do IT exercise at the same time you do aerobic exercise by alternating short bursts of intense physical activity with intervals of lighter activity. For example, you might run as fast as you can for 30 seconds and then walk slowly for 90 seconds, repeating the cycle several times. 
IT exercise boosts the metabolism and helps the body to burn more fat. It also increases the secretion of growth hormone, which makes the body more toned and lean. IT can also lower triglycerides and improve thyroid function. If you decide to do IT, start out slow. Add it into your regular aerobic exercise routine one or two times per week and start out with just one or two sets of 30 and 90 seconds. You can gradually build up to eight sets two or three times each week. And there you have it, the four types of exercise. After meal, aerobic, strength training, and IT. Don't be afraid to start out small. Go for a walk after you eat. The best type of exercise is the kind you actually do. If you have time to include all the types into your schedule, great. You'll experience fantastic results. If not, do what you can. Every choice adds up. I'd like to close by sharing three tips that will help you stay active for good. First, find a fitness buddy. If you need extra motivation to get moving, try the buddy system. Find a walking partner or someone to go to the gym with. It's really motivating to have someone else encouraging you and counting on your support. Second, be consistent. You won't truly benefit from exercise unless you do it regularly. You can't make up for a week without exercise by working out extra long on the weekend. You need to benefit from activity every day. And third, enjoy yourself. Choose activities you like or find ways to make exercise more fun, like listening to music or walking in a beautiful setting. You're more likely to stick with something if you enjoy it. By now, I hope you feel encouraged to get moving and stay moving. I know you can do it. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step.